Hi, I'm Femi OK. It's good to see you, old friends. Today on the stream, we are looking at the lure of sports betting across the African continent. Why it's so popular. When I gamble, I'm very grateful with whatever I get from my winnings. Be it 200 rands or 150 rands, that is fine. There's no work in the township and no one will give you money, especially since there's no work. Keep any amount you receive and you'll be able to close off your expenses. And its potential dangers. You shouldn't come to a betting shop if you have stress using your last money to bet. Because if you don't win, you'll collapse. People collapse here in the shop and we never know if it is due to hunger or any other conditions. People get hurt here. We've seen a lot of people that have collapsed here. If you have a take on sports gambling across the African continent or experience, we would love to hear from you in the YouTube comment section right here, now live, be part of today's show. And joining our discussion, we have Sibongile Somali, Somalini uh, Katana. She is the executive director at the South African Responsible Gambling Foundation, and she is in Johannesburg. Junius Mabo Sajali is a social scientist at the Malawi Epidemiology and Intervention Research Unit. He has studied youth participation in gambling, and he joins us from Blantyre, Malawi. And joining us from Kenya's capital, Nairobi, Nelson Wiray is Programs Officer at the Responsible Gaming Federation of Kenya. So, Subongale, Junius, Nelson, welcome. It's so good to have all three of you here. I'm going to start with a little assignment that we sent our Nairobi crew off to do in Kenya earlier this week. They were outside of a betting shop and they spoke to a couple of gamblers. And this is what they told us. Betting has removed many of us from a life of crime. It has many advantages, and one cannot sleep hungry if it is played right. We ask for the government to support the betting industry. In 2019, I won $900. But since then, I've lost and lost. Now I have no more money. But I'm hopeful I will win next time. Ah, the hope of the bet, the next bet. That year in 2019, when you run $900 and oh, it's all downhill from there. Um, so, Bongale, I am wondering, hearing those cautionary tales and that optimism at the same time, why is sports betting doing so well across the African continent right now? What is driving that? Look, I think one of the of the reasons is that you know um, it's easily accessible. You know, um, for instance, in South Africa, you actually don't have to go um, into a casino like you have you to eat on your mobile phone. Yes, there are those that that have outlets, but one of the biggest driving factors, in particularly in South Africa, is that it's accessible across all mobile devices. So that is the for each to grow. But also, um, it's embedded in, in the sports. I mean, you know how big sports is, especially in South Africa. If you see our soccer stadiums, it's oh, filled yes. with a lot of people um, across across all our, our sporting um, fraternity. You've got your cricket, you've got your rugby, you've got soccer. So it's, it's, it's popular, you know, sports is popular. Um, and across the world. So in Africa, why not? Why would it not grow? I'm actually quite surprised that it took it took a, a very long time for sports betting to grow in Africa. Um, and if you look at the trends, and I'm sure my guests will discuss it, um, it maybe started picking up in the in the late 90s. Uh -huh. All along, sports betting in, in in Africa has been really not popular. Um, what has been popular though is our land-based casinos. All right. So, Junius, this idea of sports on the, across the African continent being super popular, so that means, does that necessarily mean that gambling then has to be super popular? Well, <laughs> not necessarily. It's, it's not supposed to be like that, in my opinion. But then these people, these, 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 these gambling companies, they, are, they have this uh, sophisticated marketing. They have this aggressive marketing whereby, I, like what Sibungi was saying, you don't struggle to get uh, a, a gambling a, a outlet. 
very easy to gamble. And you, wherever you go in the street, you are exposed to some gambling adverts. So it's like their marketing is very sophisticated. And with that, people are exposed to gambling everywhere. You're exposed to gambling while you are in the streets. When you are in the street, at least, you, for example, like in Malawi, you will not walk 20, 30 meters, uh, 100, about 100 meters rather, without seeing a billboard for a, a gambling company. Like we have premier bet as well as world star betting. But if it, that is if you are in town, if you decide to stay home, yeah. you also be bombarded with adverts. Wow. You, you watch your TV, you find an advert on the TV for gambling. Ah. You leave the TV, you try to see, to check your phone, to say, let me do some internet. You find a, a advert for a gambling on the internet. So you see, uh, they have developed this sophisticated marketing mechanism, and that's, that has fueled the growth of gambling industry. And many people considering that uh, in our African setting, uh, unemployment is very high. So when somebody is exposed to a seemingly an opportunity that looks like is going to change their lives, uh, like from what that young man was saying, yeah. they are easy to jump on it. Nelson, go ahead. Let me jump on that also, Femi. I really uh, appreciate my fellow guests, my fellow panelists on this uh, point because uh, gambling uh, is something that uh, is uh, spreading like wildfire. It's currently spreading like wildfire. It has been spreading before. And the root cause has been that gambling started, uh, the traditional form of gambling was maybe casinos. It was maybe these informal formal, informal bettings in the streets, but it wasn't uh, the way that we had uh, envisioned online gambling will bring it to. Mm -hmm. You had to go there, you had to have time to go there, you had to have time to queue to play, you had to have time to queue to collect your winnings. All this, you had to do it in a, in the space and time that the premises that you are going to is opening. But right now, when the, we find that uh, gambling right now is uh, something that you can do with your phone with all uh, without any restriction, and uh, it, it makes it uh, very much uh, popular and uh, very much secretive and accessible for people right. who didn't even have so the opportunity to gamble before. easy. Nelson, let me give our audience some idea of some of the big betting companies across the African continent. Have a look here on my laptop. All right, so we've got Betking. Nigeria, over 160 million Naira won using the ACCA bonus feature. Betway, the best choice for betting. Look at the phone, it's all on the phone. One more here. Bet Niger's mobile app, help you bet on football. Um, uh, Nelson, I'm going to slightly blame Kenya and the brilliant M-Pesa, which brought banking to your phone, which means that the tech was available for people to bet, even if they didn't have a bank account. They can do it so easily. Is that an issue with the amount of sports betting that is happening across the African continent and, and in Kenya? Definitely, definitely. When you come to mobile money, it has yeah. revolutionized the, the way we send money. A uh, person in the rural areas did even uh, used to have uh, any form of banking before, but right now they can access banking any time that they want just on their phone. It's as easy to send money as ABC. So uh, the gambling companies also took advantage of that. And you can see that they have put, uh, uh, they have seamlessly integrated the mobile money with their systems so that when you deposit money, it's immediate. And when you withdraw, it's immediate. Okay, this also with sports betting coupled with our passion. You know, that's what we've, we haven't talked about, our passion for sports as youths, as young people. Our passion has been milked uh, by, by the companies, and uh, this is, it, it, it has brought about, I can say, a brilliant concussion that uh, is a safe haven for any gambling activities to continue in, uh, in Africa. Uh, yes. Larry, can I just come in there? Yes. Um, look, I think there's two things that I need to pick up on that have been said by my fellow guests. First of all, um, juniors have talked about how marketing um, has actually perpetuated in gambling. I think in our South African context, we've got very strong legislations that actually make sure that, you know, it curbs the amount of advertising or marketing by, by companies. Um, but it's, it's, it's actually amazing to say then, whilst we've got the regulation and the legislation that curbs, you know, how much uh, people, uh, the, the exposure of, of people, right. it's growing nonetheless.
Um, if you can look at, you have mentioned Betway, it's one of the most responsible operators in South Africa. They hardly actually go on social media and entice. And the key way they for hardly, us they hardly, but they entice, the enticement. Sivongale, they entice a little bit. Well, how, how, how would you describe enticement when you're talking about um, a betting company, a gambling company? How, how, how do they entice? You know, there's a gentleman in Kenya yeah. that um, actually the one that won um, $900, um, $900 in, the, in, the, in, in 2009. 20, 2019. US dollars. So yeah. basically he was enticed to say oh. that if you gamble, you, you, you can become a millionaire yeah. overnight. So in, in our South, South African context, we've got what we call responsible gambling, which is um, actually what operators they subscribe to. They are mostly prevented from advertising and enticing people to say, mm. um, if you gamble, you stand a chance of becoming a millionaire. It's the same as sure. the banking system in our country. Yeah, um, yeah. You hardly see um, you know, operators trying to link up with, with, with various banks accounts of individuals because our regulations are quite clear that you know when gambling happens it needs to be irresponsible but yeah. that's not to take away the, the factors Sibongale. that lead to addiction all right Sibongale, I'm, I'm going to bring in um the ceo of gamble alert in nigeria because he talks about this narrative this narrative about you you can win you can win big and then junius come off the back of that because i know you want to take us in a different direction. So we're gonna do Fizayo Oke. He is no relation. He's the CEO of Gamble Alert. Uh, we spoke to him earlier and this is what he told us. This is Fizayo. The impact of gambling on young people in the sub-Aran region of Africa have been both positive and negative. On the positive side, gambling has created job opportunities for some persons. For others, it's been a very good avenue for entertainment. However, the negative impact of gambling on young people can never be overemphasized. And one major issue is the poss possibility of gambling addiction or financial ruin. And therefore, I look forward to regulators coming up with laws, policies that entrenches responsible marketing, stopping the rack to riches narrative. Genius, go ahead. Yeah, well, I... From that video, on the positive side that he has mentioned to say, uh, gambling industry brings employment. Well, fine and good, yes, it brings employment. But then, I, I might not know from a uh, Nigeria perspective, but then from our research that we did recently from the, 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 the article that you, 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 you cited, you see, uh, the, 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 the payment that is going to these workers we are told to say they are paid based on commission. So if you are paid based on commission, it depends on how many tickets, betting tickets that you sell. So for for example, what to start betting? What to start betting? You start betting as low as 10 kwacha. Mm. So if you sell 10 kwacha tickets, which is if we convert it to dollar, is 0. 0.000000 cents if we convert it to a, a US dollar. So assuming somebody says uh, sells maybe 15, 20, by the end of the month, the pay that will, that will come from this uh, 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 gambling job will not be enough as well. So while we accept that, yes, it has created jobs, well, fine and good, but the jobs, are they the jobs that can make somebody uh, survive 1 to 30? You know, because even... Uh, 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 some people that uh, 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 gamble, uh, they're even those that are, are in employment. So you see, yes, I agree it created employment, but then the employment itself, uh, it does not mm. give the, 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 ultimate, uh, right. the ultimate income. Yeah. All right. Let me, let me go to YouTube because our, our, our viewers on YouTube are eager to get into the conversation. I'm going to make this a speed round. So Nelson your instant reaction to what our audience is, uh, is picking up on. So, um, uh, gamblers must gamble responsibly. I'm not sure if that is an oxymoron, is it? Nelson. 
Uh, when it comes to responsible gambling, I think uh, the gamblers have, are, are the ones who are suffering the burden uh, to be told that uh, responsible gambling only lies on their shoulders. But this is not the case. Uh, responsible gambling is an environment created uh, by all stakeholders. It's a multifaceted environment. That's yeah. what I think, okay. where the government should be responsible, one, uh, for the rules and regulations that they put and the enforcement of the rules and the regulations. Right. Two, the gambling companies themselves they should create a responsible gambling environment where they identify at-risk people, people who have is issues, and uh, set rigorous methods to make, that, to make sure that these people are being looked after and don't uh, spiral into right. problem gambling. All right, another, uh, another, another question. Those... Let, me, let, me get, let, me yes. get, let me get back to you two, because I want I can, our viewers I to just... participate. Go, go on, Nelson, very quickly. Then. All right, all right. <laughs> go ahead, quickly. Oh, oh, yeah, go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, the, another facet of the responsible game, uh, gambling, it yeah. belongs also to the society. The society should mm. be able to, to to stop this stigma that it has, and uh, especially the schools. So if I look at a uh, sport check of uh, most schools in Kenya, right. I'll find that they have a school, drugs policy. They have an alcohol policy. They're no school a has a gambling policy. policy. Yeah, I yet. love gambling. that. I love that. All right, that it's brings us up on that, to, yes, to Becky. Exactly. Becky's on YouTube. I'm going to put this to you, Sibongale, very quickly again. Becky says there is need for serious regulation, especially with Gen Z gamblers. Thoughts? Look, um, we've got the laws. The laws in our country doesn't permit anyone under the age of 18 to gamble. Um, and in terms of the South African Responsible Gambling Foundation, we've got what we call Taking Risks Wisely. It's a program yeah. that we actually take to schools where we teach people, um, young kids in school, about the effective or the effects of, of wagering, because that's how it starts. The culture is built in a school environment where kids, they wager on almost everything and grow. They would have actually adapted to a certain behavior. Right. So um, Gen Z... The, the rules are clear, the regulations are there. No one under the age of 18 should gamble. I'm going to bring in Randolph here. Uh, Randolph, I'm going to play for you, Juniors, and then immediately react off the back of where his largest concerns are. Here's Randolph. Contrary to the perception and the promise of an easy and safe way of making money, these betting establishments have been set up to profit off losses of individuals. They are not charity organizations handing out cash and capital to the youth of Africa. Rather, they are here to take from our vulnerable youth socially and morally by advertising these establishments we are preaching to our youth to forego hard work and excellence in pursuit of a fool's paradise well <laughs> you see okay from what you have said if i am to put it in this way gambling it's a game of hope that's the research has shown the research that we have had. Gambling is a game of hope. I would say, even if you lose, but they will still give you hope that maybe if I try one more time, one more time. I'll win. Yeah. Yeah. So you find that somebody uh, 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 will press a bet and lose, and then the next, a friend wins it. If they win, they'll say, well, maybe next time it will be me. Mm. So. Gambling plays with your mind. It is a game of hope that, okay, even if you lose this time, don't lose hope. Look at your friends. They have tried. They have won. It will be you next time. So these gambling companies, they know that uh, our African landscape, largely it is young population. And young population, we love things. So, so they, they bring so, all sorts of marketing to make you not leave the industry, even if you, are, you, you, you see that you are losing, but you not leave because they'll bring you something that is going to make you stay, give you hope that maybe next time, if you try, it will be you. But I, I'm, I'm going to just be upfront here. We know that gambling is enticing. The idea is, oh, you keep going back, you keep going back. And so it's... It's often framed as a leisure activity, not a banking or employment activity. Maybe it's on us as citizens to truly, truly understand that. I, I have to play you a Bet King ad, which sums up this idea of responsible 
gambling. And then Nelson, you come off the back with your immediate reactions. Let's have a look. Food sweet to no be like, but kings know when to stop. Okay, uh, thanks Femi for that. I think that that's a very interesting advertisement. But what I say, what I don't, I, I usually, I'm usually against when it comes to uh, uh, such advertisements, uh, gambling advertisements, is they shouldn't entice, they shouldn't be put in a way that it, uh, it's like sugar coats or it, uh, it entices. Maybe because an advertiser like this, a kid will find it very, very interesting. And what that kid is uh, looking at is actually gambling. But and can, uh, they don't we, know it. They just see the name Bet. Can we look at the so responsibility think... of governments, guys? Um, yes, go ahead. We, we are mainly focusing on operators. And I'm in no way suggesting that they don't create harm. But, I mean, where are the regulations? I mean, look at the advert that you just played. Clearly, a gamble. So we, 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 if there are no regulations that stops this behavior, then obviously um, gambling operators will, will, will have a playing field. So I think to call what it is, the regulations, it all hinders around the regulation. Governments must take responsibility and put proper regulations in place to protect the public. But then... I think it's important. I think this, it, is it, a, this is a guerrilla gorilla marketing tactic, which is uh, very, very... <laughs> I can say immoral in my side because it's not honest. Uh, any advertisement should be honest and it should be uh, purporting. It should be selling whatever it's purporting to sell, not uh, quote it under anything else. I think uh, this one is immoral. Let, let, so, okay. Junius, go ahead. Let me go ahead. ask you. But then is it not your responsibility, let, let, you and I, to actually place the public to the dangers then of falling into such tricks because I believe your organization and my organization, we actually are working on, on making sure that we educate the public, you know. Um, if there are guerrilla tactics, um, we actually engage with the operators, you know, on messaging and how the messaging should be conveyed to the public. Right, so so Bongale, let me, let me, means we are I, failing I, 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 in so, our so Bongale, let, me, let me just add, just in case the audience I, forgot, that you are funded by the betting and gambling organizations in South Africa. That is part of the regulation Agreed. process. Yes. So you are funded by an organizations who actually profit from people gambling. I think that's really important to understand and that's quite a difficult tightrope for you to walk. Junius, quickly, you are probably going to be the last yeah. word in this conversation. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have a question to, to I have a question to Sibongi. Yes. You see, you talk about uh, uh, gov government uh, uh, regulating uh, advertising. How effective is that in your country? Because you see, uh, we might have a regulation on advertising, but the same regulation, you find that they'll say, uh, don't, this, this should not be at, uh, uh, accessed by people under the age of 18. But you find that in the same, people under the age of 18 are still participating in gambling. How is the situation in your country? Because it might be easy to say. Okay, let me just clarify something. Um, there's two issues that I want to clarify. Um, first of all, um, we are funded by the by the by the operate by the regulators by the operators. So, but Sibongale, we, we're, we're in the last data. one minute of but, our show. So, I love that the conversation is flowing, okay. but it's flowing to an end. Last sentence from you, Sibongale. Go ahead. Um, look. Our, our regulations are very clear. In terms of advertising and marketing, it should not be overtly. Okay. Um, clearly, they do have marketing, but it's very subtle. All right, I hear you. Um, uh, last sentence from you, Junius. A sentence. Go ahead. Well, uh, gambling is a big thing. It's a very it's a, a compl a complex industry, and right. we need a public health approach to address the problems that are coming with this okay. uh, gambling industry. All right, and last very short sentence from you, Nelson. Go ahead. 
mine is to urge the youth to yes enjoy life have fun but at the same time uh, do it responsibly the choices have consequences so stay informed stay empowered and stay engaged thank you thank you guests thank you viewers thank you youtube see you next time Thank you.